Venezuela updates. It's no secret at this point, because Marco Rubio likes to take to Twitter, tell the whole world what they're doing moments after it happens and then act like they had nothing to do with it, like blacking out Venezuela. The very first report we ever seen via tweet came from Rubio, and it was within minutes of the first initial blackout, stating that like a majority of the whole country was now in the dark. And then everyone was like, well, how did you know? Why would you tweet it so quickly if that was like part of a military plan? And, you know, he tried to defend himself, but it still, it showed the whole world. It gave up their hand. You couldn't no longer say that it was an accident or it was rebels on the ground down there. He made a direct connection that they had something to do with it because he knew within minutes before any news outlet even had anything printed, he was tweeting about it. And that becomes an issue out here strategically on this world stage when you've got guys that are telegraphing moves and it can come back to bite you. Now, in this instance, the blackouts continue. We have Maduro saying that they're going to go through a 30-day of rationing electricity. The reason being is because ever since the initial collapse of electricity, other plants were cascading, meaning that they were just getting overloaded. And this has been a reoccurring theme, and people are complaining big time, saying that we cannot eat, we can't drink, there's no food, there's no water, can't run our businesses. Of course, people are frustrated, and what they're wanting to happen here is the people to get so ticked off that they've had enough with Maduro. You better learn, guys. Someone out there better be paying attention. When the tables turn, when they go into these places, even if everything was peachy at first, they will find a way to make the people uncomfortable to the fullest. And right now, they're doing just that. And as everyone's looking around, seeing their country falling apart day by day, they look at what is supposed to be the leadership in Maduro, and they're going to start blaming him. When he's hunkered down trying to survive this assault himself, with mercenaries on the ground, Russian mercenaries around him. Of course, U.S. mercenaries on the ground coming out of the jungles of Brazil and Colombia. You have a lot going on in Venezuela and not a lot being said about it. Anytime they put a country in the dark like that, I, I hope people learn from here that you've got to zone in on this and you've got to pay attention to what's happening and the outcome of it. Now, I've questioned in the past, if they really wanted Maduro, why didn't they take out his flight? He flew to Mexico City. It was all open. He flew all these other places. They knew where he's been this whole time. There's never been a decapitation strike launched on him like they tried Saddam Hussein and missed. None of that. It's like they see him flying around, doing all this, and it's like if he's such a problem, why didn't you go after him away from all of his people, away from his countrymen? That way you didn't have to murder any other innocent people or, or you know, bomb Drop a big bomb on his presidential palace and you know, anything like that. They could have killed innocent people on the ground. You know that it's just him and his regime if they're in a, in a plane flying. Yet they never tried that. Hmm. Why would that be? I'm sure there's a million reasons, a million excuses, and a million ideas why. But what it allows is for this to keep on continuing with Giotto set up on the other side. And I've said it a million times. In the end, it's the people that lose in this. They get caught up in the war machine. And that's the major stress here. The people of Venezuela suffering at this point with lack of electricity, water, and all types of other stuff. And we have April 6th coming up right around the corner. Let's not forget, this is when Guiado and all them telegraphed openly their move. They're calling for a revolution to march on the presidential palace. And to have all these pockets of resistance spring up into motion April 6th. So make sure to follow me on Twitter for more updates and details. I'll leave a link below. It's been Dabu7.